Ah, hello there, my friends. Hi, nice to see you. Welcome um, to today's live lesson. I'm very excited about today's lesson. We're talking all about socialising. Now, socialising, well, that's making friends, meeting new people, getting to know people. Uh, we'll be talking about the language, about work, socialising with colleagues, students, university, everywhere you need. It'll be very, very exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So before we get into it, let's begin with a little bit of this. Hello, my friends. Welcome. It's very nice to see you. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of November. And today, God, autumn is here. I'm looking out of the window. It started drizzling and then it was raining. And now it's just pouring down. <laughs> drizzling, raining, pouring down. Oh, dear. Autumn's here. It's getting very nippy and cold and chilly. But not to worry, we're nice and snug inside. And today we're going to have a live lesson. We're going to talk all about socialising. Socialising is basically meeting people, making friends, getting to know people, making contacts. Um, it may be at work. It may be in a club. It may be at university or even school. It's a very important area. And we're going to look today at the language in English you need and maybe one or two tips to help you socialise. Right. Great. Um, let's see. Now, I can see quite a few of you are here, which is great. You've obviously seen my messages that today is the live lesson. I know it's usually Thursday, but I've had to change it to Wednesday because I'm going away tomorrow just for a, a short trip. Um, and so we're here today. And also notice the clocks in Spain and Europe have gone back. We do this very mystical thing where we switch the clocks back an hour and the rest of the world goes, huh? What's happened? Anyway, we are um, here. It's 10 a.m., same time as always for me, but it might be a different time for you. Let me see who's in the house, who's in here. Ria, hello. Gurmit Singh, hello. We've got El Kaing from Myanmar. Nice to see you. Rabia Tirmazi, hello there. Blue Moon, interesting name. Great. He Sh L, if I pronounced it right. Great. Um, Lovepreet Kaul from Punjab in India. Nice to see you here. Mohammed Radwan Mo. Very, very good. Nice to see you here as well. So here we are um, today, as I said, socialising. Wow, lots of people from all over the world. T today is a public holiday in Japan. Did you know? I didn't know that. It's almost like I planned it, Kenik, to make sure that you could attend. Almost. <laughs> Sebastian says in English, por favor. Of course, let's keep it all in English. Absolutely. Um, Miriam from Germany. Great. Elham says, I'm not social at all. Mm, right. Well, interesting. We're going to we're going to sort that out. We're going to make you a sociable person by the end of the lesson. OK, so what we're going to do today, let me just go through some of the activities that we are going to do today. So, as I said, socializing vocabulary, that's our main theme, right? We're going to look at the main vocabulary to talk about this. Um, we're then going to talk about socialising at work, but also at university, because I realise we have quite a lot of university students as well. So socialising maybe at university, um, but also at work and, and how you do that and the language you may need. We're going to look at small talk, right? This is the kind of... The, the When you meet somebody new and you talk about rubbish, <laughs> not rubbish, it means 
you don't go very deep, right, into a conversation. You normally have some small talk about the weather or something. We're going to be looking at different kinds of small talk today and also some idioms on this topic, of course. And we're back with Kahoot. And if you don't know what Kahoot is, you better stick around, stay to the end, and you will find out what that is. So lots of interesting stuff today, right? Socialising vocabulary. Excellent. I'm going to kick off, as always, um, by looking at the vocabulary to start with. Say a few hellos, just as I'm sorting out my notes. Hello, Catherine from Belgium. Litty from Kerala in India. Nice to see you here. Keith, are you from Spain? No, I'm not. I'm from Manchester in England. But but I <laughs> I came to Spain because they've got lovely weather, except for today. It's like being back home in Manchester, pouring down today. Never mind, the rain's still good. It's not the weather that makes you happy, right? It's your own choice. So let me um, let me kick off. Oh, and I just wanted to say, because um, some of you may know that I've already started the new course, IELTS Speaking Interactive. We are we have started this week. That's all happening. Lots of activities going on. Um, that course is closed for the moment. If you are interested, um, it will probably open again next year. I'm imagining February, maybe not January, because when the course finishes at the end of December, I'll be looking at kind of improving the course and then probably February. But I will let you know. But if you still want to study at the moment with me, you can still study on this course over here, um, the Get a Band 7 Plus. This course is on my website. Um, you can you can get it. It's a self-study course. You can join any time you study in your own time at your own pace. So this is still available. You can still study this with me. Absolutely. Um, the links, I'll just ask the moderators, guys, if you can, to just put the link in the chat and people can find it. Or you can go to my website, right, and get it on the website as well. You'll find links there all over the place as <laughs> soon as you go. What's my website? Good question. The website is the Keith Speaking Academy. And if you go and have a look there, you will find um, different links to the course, lots of materials about IELTS speaking. OK, those of you who like Facebook, you can follow me on Facebook at the Keith Speaking Academy as well. Um, we're, we're up there doing lots of stuff. And what else? Well, if you're on YouTube, please do remember, subscribe. <laughs> and turn on the notifications so you can find out about more stuff coming up. Talking about YouTube, um, these live sessions, um, if you want to check the times, because to be honest, this month and the coming month, things are all upside down. There's so many things happening with work, with family, got a trip back to the UK. There's all sorts of stuff happening. My timetable is moving. So what I've decided to do is let me show you on the YouTube channel, right? If you go to the YouTube channel, you'll see here at the very, very top, I've just put the timetable for the month. You'll see up there. So for November, right, we've got a live lesson today. There's a recorded video next Saturday, the 13th, and then another on the 20th. And then our next live lesson is on the 25th. So I've just put the timetable for November because everything is topsy-turvy. It's all upside down, November and December. So there you go. You can find out the activities I'm doing on YouTube and, and Facebook here. You can watch the live lessons on my Facebook page or um, on the YouTube channel, of course. OK, so just to let you know. The channel is English speaking success. Easy to find, easy to remember, I hope. Cool, nice. So. We've got some people from the course. Cass is here. Hello, Cass. Nice to see you. She's on the course, on the interactive course. Brilliant. 
Right, excellent. So vocabulary, let's jump straight in and start talking about socializing. <clears throat> so social, socializing comes from the verb, right? Um, to socialize. So to socialize basically is to, to meet other people. In simple words, it's to meet other people. Um, socializing then is also a noun. I mean, it comes from society. Society is people, right? Groups of people, basically. Um, so, but you can also have socializing as a noun. I hate socializing. <laughs> it's not true, but it's not. I yeah. Let me let me change that. I don't mind socializing <laughs> i've changed it socializing as a as a noun <clears throat> right i changed that because between you and me i'm quite an introvert right especially with other people i'm very happy spending time on my own i don't mind mixing with people and socializing and getting to know people but I'm also very happy just sitting on my own with a book. I mean, that's just me, right? <clears throat> so socializing, some people love it. Some people don't mind. Some people hate it. We'll see. Anyway, the noun socializing, society, group of people, basically, right? So we've got two adjectives. We've got social and sociable, but let's be careful because we use them a bit in different ways. Social is to describe things, right? Sociable is to describe a person. So you may say, I'm very sociable, right? That's fine. Don't say I'm social. Mm, no, right? I'm, I am a sociable person, right? That's what we would say. I'm a sociable person. Social is used for things like, let's say, a social worker who works helping families in society who need help, right? Um, we can talk about social benefits. Is the money the government gives to help people without a job or with, with difficulties in their lives, right? Social benefits, social worker, a social club. In our neighbourhood, we have a social club for young people to help them meet and get off the streets and, uh, you know, be with people of their own age. So social is more about things. Sociable is more about people, right? Let's see. Let's see what you guys are like. Let's see if you are sociable or not. Anmar says, I don't like socialising. I prefer spending my time at home watching your awesome videos. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> right. Jana Tool, hello. Nice to see you here. Reia says, I'm not a sociable person. Perfect. Nice. I mean, your English is nice. Yes. <laughs> We've got social networking. Of course, that's another good example. Social networks. Social media. Obvious examples that I miss social networks, <clears throat> which are really the same thing, I think. Great. Social media, says Naja. Thank you very much. Yes, well pointed out. Excellent. Sociable means talkative. Mm, yes, yes. It's, a, it's an interesting question, Jasur, because I think being sociable is a very important balance between listening and speaking, right? Sociable people are often talkative, but some very good sociable people are not very good. Some very sociable people are also good at listening, right? So I think it's a balance of both. Mm. Great. What else have we got? Who else is sociable? Marianne, I'm sociable. Mehdi, I'm a sociable person. Lovely. Great. Marie, bonjour. <laughs> Right, Mona says, socialising is vital in Arabic culture. Now, that's interesting because I do recognise certain cultures put great emphasis on socialising for work, for getting ahead, 
for making progress, right? Whatever it is. Very, very interesting. Naja says, I'm 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 sociable, not a sociable. If you say a, ah, right? Because sociable is not a noun, then you have to say, you have to put a noun. I'm a sociable person. Great. Naja, thank you very much for that. That's lovely. That's helping all of us sort it out. Right. Flita says, I'm an introvert, but really like to talk with my close friends and nice people. Yes. Very good. Great. Sevincha, I'm sociable. Right. Paula says, I'm a gregarious person. Lovely. Same thing, Paula. I'm going to say, if it's a person, you do need the a, right? You've got to have the a, adjective, noun. A, bum, noun. A gregarious person. A sociable person, like Naja said, right? Excellent. Thank you for sharing, guys. Lovely. Let's move on. Sociable. <clears throat> So other words you may look at, if you want to talk about sociable people, right? Other similar words, we can say friendly. He's very gregarious, which is exactly what Paola said. Um, affable, affable. Affable means friendly. Somebody is friendly. Um, approachable. It, it is what it sounds like. If it's easy to go and talk to somebody, to approach somebody, then they're approachable, they're sociable, um, it, they're easy to talk to, right? So these are all very similar words, easy to talk to. Affable just means friendly. I'm trying to give you the kind of the, the nuance of the meaning here. Gregarious is more outgoing, you like, sorry, outgoing, you like meeting people, Friendly, obviously, friendly. Okay, so you can use these words as well. Let's just get the pronunciation right because they're not that easy to pronounce. So I'll just give a short sentence and you tell me if it's true for you, right? I'm friendly. Now you repeat, I'm friendly. What I want you to do is to also change it to make it true for you. So you may say, I'm not friendly. <laughs> I'm not friendly. Or I make, I'm extremely friendly. Okay, so let's repeat first. Friendly. True for you. <laughs> repeat. Gregarious. 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 I'm not a gregarious person. True for you. Next one, repeat. Affable. Affable. I'm, I'm trying to get my hand in the picture. <laughs> Affable. Affable. Let me do it this way. Affable. Affable. <laughs> Affable. A bit like apple. I'm quite an affable person. True for you? Approachable. Approachable. I think I'm quite approachable. True for you? Aha. Aha. Right. Good. Okay. Excellent. So some nice practice there. Good. Um <laughs> We're getting some interesting things coming up here. Mehdi says, I'm quite an affable person. Good natured. Yes, you can also be good natured. Yes. Um, Fight says, I'm a gregarious person and I like to mingle in social meetings. Great. Sahar, I'm extremely affable. Nice. I'm a little bit affable person. Oh, this is an interesting one. I'm a little bit of an affable person. Now we have to add, this is confusing. I know I'm a little bit, right, is your, is your clause. A little bit, that's one clause. So you still need another a. Ah. 
I'm a little bit of an affable person. So think of a little bit as a clause or a, a, a chunk. I'm a little bit of I'm a little bit of an affable person. Complex but nice. Thank you, Pradeep. That's lovely. I love your um, photo as well. Great. Go, <laughs> Ravi. I'm a banana person. Seriously, great. Okay, amiable is good. Yep, that's the Latin root word. Amiable, friendly. Let's add that because that's the nice one. Friendly, affable. I'm going to put that next to amiable, affable. A amiable. Excuse me. Great, Sonia. Great. <laughs> Okay, some nice expressions there. Let's look at the opposite though, right? If somebody is not sociable, we may say he's unfriendly or he's rather unfriendly. Often we, we're quite diplomatic, right? We want to make it softer. Um, so let's say he's, he's, he's rather unfriendly. Other words, solitary, aloof, cold, Solitary, I mean, again, pronounce with me, solitary, solitary. Solitary from solo, alone, right? So that means like, likes, likes to be on their own. Aloof, 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 aloof is, um, it's not two words, it's one word. To be aloof, to be aloof is to be cold and distant from other people, right? So to be distant, in the sense, not physically distant, but emotionally distant. So you're a bit cold, right? To be aloof, to be cold, similar thing, right? You know, when you meet some people and they, some people are like, oh, it's great to see you, give me a hug. Great, right? That's friendly or amiable, affable. Some people, though, oh, it's great to see you. Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? Uh, all right. Right. Aloof. They're a bit distant. They're emotionally cool or cold. So some people are aloof. So, of course, you may be a, you may be a very friendly person, but in a different time and context, you can be aloof. So I, I guess aloof is not your personality. Aloof is an emotion you may have at a certain time, right? Um, I'm sure if you see me at a party with people I don't know, I'm a little bit aloof, right? Because maybe I'm nervous and that makes me aloof. Actually, deep down, I'm very affable, but I might be aloof in a certain situation. <laughs> I love that word, aloof. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. I'm aloof. Are you really? I am, yes. I'm aloof. Okay, lovely. What else have we got? Florence says, yes, I'm very shy, but I'm a very affable person. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. I'm a very, I'm, ah, I'm going to add your ah. Lots of people today are missing the ah. <laughs> so there you go, Florence. That's my present to you is an ah. Right, Syed says, people who always smile on their face are more approachable. Yes, good. Th this is interesting, Syed, because notice you've put his face, but people could be male or female. So if we don't know it's male or female, what do we do? In English, we put there. Solves the problem, right? Even though it's one person. People, but people's plural. People who always smile on their face are more approachable. I totally agree, uh, Syed. That is so true. You see a smiling person, you think, ah, oh, I'll go and talk to them. Yes. Florence says, I'm not a gregarious person. <laughs> Gaurav says, I'm overwhelmed by the, the affability of my neighbour. Is your neighbour too friendly, right? Some people are too friendly. I totally agree. Yes. Great. Saba says, my bosom friend is quite affable as well as down to earth, right? Good. Great. 
affable, amiable, Amir. Yes, totally. They're the same. Yes. Guinea says, I'm a person who is so approachable. Lovely. Very nice English. Love it. Very nice. Thank you very much. Great. So we've got two sides of the coin, sociable and unfriendly. Aloof. Let's move on. Talking about meeting new friends. OK. Let me just come over, meet new friends. Oh, I wrote acquaintances as well, because this is important, right? Um, can I just make that a bit smaller? Meet new friends, make acquaintances. Some people use friend and acquaintance as the same. They're not. So an acquaintance is somebody you know, but they may not be a friend. At work, you probably know a hundred people, your colleagues, right? Now, they're acquaintances, but maybe only five, five, are your friends. So there's a difference, right? Let's just make that clear because it's really important. And I'm going to explain why in a moment. An acquaintance is someone you know, but... Let's make it an acquaintance is someone you know, but may not be a friend. No, but is not, excuse me, is not a friend. Is not be? <laughs> Duh. Is not a friend. It's important um, because if you talk to somebody, and you say that that they are your acquaintance, you're telling them they are not your friend. Imagine I'm down the pub and I meet some new friends. I'm socialising, I have a drink, we get to chat, we have a great time, we tell stories, we, um, you know, we even listen to some music. We're in the pub, we're drinking, we're chatting, exchanging life stories, giving each other some phone numbers and, you know, having a great time. And then at the end of the evening, I say, nice to meet you. Now we are acquaintances. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say. That's like saying, you're not my friend. But you should be because we've just spent the whole evening. So be very careful with the word acquaintance. It's somebody you know, but not a friend. If if you make friends, call them a friend, right? Don't call them an acquaintance. <laughs> so that's why I made a note of that, right? Making So making friends. <clears throat> to make new friends, to meet new friends. To meet or to make, right? You can say both. <clears throat> There's a very old fashioned phrase in English, right? That says when you meet somebody um, in English nowadays, we say nice to meet you. Shake hands. Nice to meet you. A long time ago, people would say nice to make your acquaintance. Shake hands. It's nice to make your acquaintance, which is important, right? Because to make your acquaintance is to meet you. It's not friendship. That's why it's very important. But that's quite old fashioned. We don't say that now. We say nice to meet you. Right. But be aware of the word acquaintance. Um, it's not a synonym. <clears throat> we can talk about to make friends, as I said, to hang out. So with friends, these are other words we can use to hang out with friends. Um, let me just put these into some simple sentences. Right. Um, make friends. I would like to make some new friends, let's say. I would like to make some new friends. I like to hang out normally with, hang out with friends. To chit chat is just to chat, have a simple conversation about simple things. So probably not about climate change, but about food, holidays, 
sitting in the sun, having a coffee to chit chat. So I love, um, I love to chit chat with friends over coffee to chit chat with somebody over coffee over coffee notice right because it's not that you're floating in this in the sky but it means that your your chit chat is over the coffee the coffee is is underneath <clears throat> talking of which as you and i are chit chatting now where our chit chat is over the tea so we're having a chit chat over tea I like to chit chat with you over tea. Maybe you're chit chatting with me over coffee. I don't know. Over. To chit chat or to have a chit chat, right? It's like to shower, to have a shower. We can say to have as well. I love to have a, a good chit chat with friends. There you go. I'm going to put in a real example. <clears throat> I love to have a good chit chat with my friend Adley. <clears throat> OK, so to have a good chit chat. It's yes. Why? A good chit chat, a nice chit chat. Brilliant. So all of these um, <clears throat> connect as well to connect with somebody. <clears throat> to connect with somebody. Mm, this is interesting because it, it has kind of a, a particular meaning for me. Um, so on the one hand, if you want to make contact with somebody, you say, let's catch up soon, right? So to catch up is to make contact, to make contact, you know, meet and go out. Let's catch up soon. But to connect doesn't mean that usually. To connect is more about two people getting along well having a good relationship if i say we really connected that means we got along like a house on fire again let's go back down let's go back down to the pub we're in the pub we're there we're having a few peanuts we're having a bit of a drink maybe a beer i don't know and you're meeting people, you're socialising, and then you meet one person, I'm there and I'm chatting to this person, and we get on really, we just click, boom. We're on the same wavelength. We click, we get on really well, we connect. That's the meaning of connect. To connect is to have that really strong connection or contact or relationship. So it, it has a slightly different meaning. It's not let's connect next week. No, let's catch up next week. But if you connect, then it means to get along well, right? Other expressions. Let me roll this up. This deserves a page of its own <laughs> to get along well or right to click with someone um, to get on like a house on fire i think i said like a house on fire not that that's good but it is good i know literally it's not good but metaphorically it's good um yeah so that's to connect to connect is to get along well uh to click to get on like a house on fire we really connected okay so slightly different from catching up i think you can see the difference right to click, we really connected. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Now then, we've looked at lots of vocabulary. Let me see. What else? Have we got any more vocabulary? Yes, we do. Even more vocabulary. A little bit more. Ways to say to visit a friend. Now, these are phrasal verbs, and I love these because they're so informal they're quite colloquial they are perfect for IELTS speaking 
right? Some people do say to me now and again, but Keith, IELTS speaking is a formal test, right? No, 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 no. IELTS speaking is a test of your natural, spoken, conversational, informal English, right? You need to speak in a natural way, informally. Colloquially, it's fine. That's why we've got idiomatic expressions. Most idiomatic expressions are colloquial, informal language we use in speaking. Yes, some can be written, but most are spoken. So IELTS is about informal language. It really is. Not slang and not vulgar swearing language. No, but informal, yes. So phrasal verbs are great. And I love these phrasal verbs. They sound so cool. Pop over. You must pop over next week for dinner, right? To visit a friend. Why don't you pop by tomorrow? I feel like I'm in England when I say that. It's so British. Um, I'm not sure if they use the same in America. I think drop and stop probably. Pop, I think, is very British. Please pop by tomorrow. Do you want to pop by next week? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, it's so British. Me and my tea. Great. Sat here in the rain. Oh, I think I'm nostalgic for England. I really do. Been over two years, right? Two years since the COVID. I've not been back to England. I think I'm seriously getting very nostalgic. Pop by. I'm... I mean, the good news is I am going to pop over to England in a couple of weeks, as I mentioned. Right. Drop in. It's the same. All of these are the same. Do you want to drop in next week? Can you drop by on Tuesday? Why don't you stop in and have a coffee tomorrow? Um, I tell you what, I can stop by tomorrow at six o'clock. Is that OK? Great. All of these are ways to visit a friend. And you can use these in your stories, right? If you're in your stories, I mean, in part two, for example, right? When you're talking about a situation or an experience or an event. And then I went I, and I popped over to see my friend. And then we went to a party together. I remember a very, very interesting time. I went out for dinner. So I, I stopped by at my friend's house and then we went to the restaurant together da, 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 da. you can use these in many many different ways right i love these phrasal verbs great um let me see how you're doing i've, I've neglected you i forgot you were there <laughs> i was in england hola body you can stop by to visit perfect i love it great that's nice. Naja says, I will drop in new Tuesday, next Tuesday, I think you mean. Yes. Brilliant. Good. My bosom friend Sarah would often pop by to catch up on what has happened to me over tea. Man, that is uh, outstanding. That is beautiful. That is so, so nice. And I'm so impressed because your ability to use all of this new language, that's fantastic. Wow. Wow. If I had a heart, I would throw it on the screen. Lovely. Great. Fatty, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Are you? Uh, maybe you're making a joke with the bye, right? <clears throat> that's quite funny because bye means bye-bye. It's like you're being ironic. Thanks for stopping by <laughs> and then go away. Are you trying to be funny? Because that is very, very funny. I like it. Ah, right. You've changed it next. But at, you're right. So by is by. But in a very funny way. That is very, very funny. I like it. Uh, Saba says, I'm going to pop over in Spain. Oh, I'm going to pop over to Spain. I'll pop over to. If you're going to a place with travel. Yes, pop over to Spain. I'm going to put a capital S. Otherwise, all the Spanish people will be very upset with you. When you get to immigration, the border control, they won't let you in. <laughs> they say, are you the guy who spoke, spelt S? You spelt Spain with a little S. I saw you on Keith's video. You can't come in. No, 
So be careful. S, capital S. <laughs> right, any others? Faria, you're invited to pop by my home. Thank you so much. Can you send me the address? I will be round straight after the lesson <laughs> for a cup of tea. We can have a chit chat over tea. Great. Uh, I'll pop over and see my friend, says Amir. Lovely. Great. Any others? Swing by. This is nice. Yes, Roselle. Swing by. <clears throat> Let me add that to the list. That sounds a little bit more American because Americans are much more swing by, whereas British are like pop. Swing by. Yeah, I like that. Nice. It's good. It's correct. Yes. I'll swing by on Tuesday. I'll swing by after the class. Very nice. Thank you. Felix says he will stop by at his family house tomorrow. Great. Lovely. Good. Would you stop by tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Brilliant. Excellent. Good. Marie asks, can you say to be wistful? It is a synonym of nostalgic. It's very similar. Yes, it's very similar. I'm a bit wistful today. I am, right? I can tell. Mm. <laughs> Mirka says, on your trip to England, would you like to stop by in Prague? Mirka, if the aeroplane has parachutes, then yes. If not, no. Maybe at a future date. But I love your sentence. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> When I go to my country, I pop over my dearest friend. I pop over, yes, I pop over to see. I'm going to add that in. It, it makes it more natural. I pop over to see my dearest friend. <clears throat> yes. Okay, fantastic. Brilliant. Lovely. Lots of nice practice there. Okay. Lots of interesting stuff. Um, I'm going to move on and uh, have a little drink. I just realised you can't hear that. That's my jingle. If anybody out there can make jingles, please send me a new one because that one's a bit old hat. I've had it such a long time. I think I need a new jingle. So I'm open to jingles if you want to send me one. Right. Um, I've got a question for you guys. And here's my question. <clears throat> Where do you meet new friends? I think nowadays, you know, people meet friends. I don't know. When I was young, we used to meet friends in the library or in the museum. But nowadays, things are different. Um, excuse me. I'm going to come to the friendship coach in a minute. Where do you meet new friends? Just um, give me a comment below. Let me know. And whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to increase the font size. I think this is too small. Bear with me a minute. I just think the font is too small. Where do you meet new friends? Give me a message in the chat box. I think that's better. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it clearly. I think that's better. OK, where do you meet new friends? Let's have a look. Well, Mohammed says at work, restaurant. You meet new friends in a restaurant? Really? I'm talking about new friends, right? At wedding parties? Great, good. In club? In, in a club, I would say. In a club? In a club? Um, let me just move things across. Where else? At office? At the office? I tell you what. We're all struggling with the and a ah today, aren't we? <laughs> At the office, yep. Yeah. Great. Um, in the virtual world due to COVID. 
in the virtual world. Great. Um, where else? Such social networking. Yeah. On the Instagram. <laughs> Christina's going to kill me because she says, right, I've given you the, and then you tell me you don't need the, not with Instagram. No, because it's, well, it's a name. It's like on WhatsApp, on Instagram, on Facebook. You don't need the. Okay. Um, Parisa at a cafe or the, a or the. At a cafe is generally speaking. At the cafe is a particular cafe that you go to to meet people. At a cafe. Um, I meet new friends in social media, on, on social media. Yeah, good. Connor says at work, right? Good. Grocery store. Wow. At the grocery store. Wow, that's interesting. Yes. And why not? Absolutely. OK, very, very interesting. So clearly there's there's lots of different places. There's the physical places and then there's the virtual places like on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on WhatsApp, maybe. WhatsApp, I think, is more the f no, no, on WhatsApp. Um, at work, in the workplace, in a cafe or in a museum in a library, also in the grocery shop, down on the edge of the street, at the end of the street. Okay, good. So that's where you meet new friends. Um, interesting. The friendship coach, I was reading this the other day. And guys, if you could share this in the um, the moderators, Paula and Medir and Apsari, if you could share this in the chat. The friendship coach, I'm just going to show you. It was a really interesting story. And I think it's interesting about the concepts, but the language as well. And it's about a woman, if I remember correctly, who had reached 30, right, 30 years old, and she felt she had no friends, that she her life had taken a path, particularly work, and she just so focused that she was not making friends. And she didn't know how to make friends and was getting a bit depressed. And I think this is a very common situation in society today that people are disconnected and it's not so easy to make friends. Wow, the last two years, it's been almost impossible to get out and meet new friends. And so she finds somebody, this is in America, who is a friendship coach, right? You want to learn English? Go to an English coach. You want to make friends? or learn how to make friends, go to a friendship coach. And this person shows her how to make friends. And it's really interesting. I mean, I thought it was interesting. I think it's worth having a look. I'll share the link with you. I'll just show you briefly on the on the screen now what it looks like. Um, basically, I hired a friendship coach. Oh, come on. Websites. I hired a friendship coach to help me make friends. Here's what happened. Friendships don't just appear. You have to be intentionable about making them. Um, and you can have a look, right? The year I turned 30, so to turn 30 is to become 30. The year I realized I didn't have friends, that I was heading into a new decade of my life, feeling strong about my career and my life accomplishments and my relationship. But when he asked me who I wanted to invite to my birthday party, my mouth opened and let out a long trail of, um... And it's, she's a very gregarious person, very affable, very sociable. But then something changed. Friends got married and had children, and she didn't. Oh, this sounds so familiar to me. I felt sad and lonely. And then she met this counsellor or this friend and it tells the whole story I hired a friendship coach <clears throat> it's really interesting if you want to practice your reading um, it's really interesting if you want to practice your English it's great if you want to find some nice tips of how to make friends it's really good 
quite nice. Anyway, guys, go and have a look. Go and check it out. The Friendship Coach. I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on actually to the next bit, which is this. We've talked about socialising vocabulary, right? Um, we're going to have a little, a little chat about socialising at work, but I'm including university here as well, right? Um, and look at the language around this kind of situation. Cass says, this is so me. Yeah, I really, I really related to the story. I thought it was very, very interesting. Right, Marjon, thank you very much. Right, good. Let's carry on. Socialising at work. So where was I? I was here, right? Speaking topics, socialising at work, university or school. So the kind of language we're looking at. Making, to make contacts, right? So co again, the difference between friendship, acquaintance and contacts. It's a little bit different. I think contacts is quite clear, right? Contacts is to know somebody because they are useful for you, right? Um, let me this. Let me put this in. I think as, as simple as I can make it, right? Let me see. Ooh, where are we? Here we are. Make contacts, excuse me. Um, to meet people because they can be useful. Now, this is not necessarily a negative thing. It doesn't mean you're manipulating people. It just means, well, it's good to know these people. If you make contacts at work, you get to know people. If you get to know your boss and your other people who are senior in the company, those are good contacts, right? They can be useful for you in the future in a very positive way. Maybe you, you go and chat to the, um, the, the, the person who works in the grocery store or the baker or the butcher because it's useful to have that contact. If you in the future need something special, maybe they can help. Make contacts with neighbours, right? Your neighbours may not be your friends, but they can be useful contacts. So that idea of kind of friendship, acquaintance and contacts are a little bit different. I think socialising at work is about building relationships, right? So I'll just I'm going to make this clear. These are verbs at the moment. Obviously, you can make them nouns to build relationships with people. That idea, it's, it's good to build relationships, um, build a connection with someone. Do you remember we talked about that connection? Is that clicking to get on well? So maybe you, you think it's important to build a connection with your close team, right? The people you're working closely with, you want to try and build a connection you want to make contacts with people in other departments. And you can build relationships with everybody. Okay, so build a connection with someone and build relationships with people and to make contacts more general. Okay, um, we talk about networking, right? Especially at work, um, there are different events, whether it's a conference, a meeting, um, or, or a social activity, maybe going down the pub with colleagues, that's networking. So to networking is to meet people, to meet people normally for work reasons. So I'm talking in the context of work or university, right? So let's go and network. Let's go and meet people for work. Um, so very often, you will have networking events for working people. I mean, we have them in this city. I've been to a few in Santander where the working people, especially people who work for themselves, they organize these events. You go along, you take your name card, uh, you go and have 
a snack or something to drink, you normally there's a, somebody speaking, a presentation, and then you get a chance to network, to go and meet other people. Hello, my name's Keith. Here, here's my card. Hello, um, I'm an English teacher. How are you? Good, nice to meet you. Here's my card. There are different ways of networking, right? Um, but essentially, people want to build contacts, build relationships, sometimes make a connection with people. That's what it's all about, right? Networking. So it can be a very important part of work. Similar is to mingle. Now, to mingle is a bit more informal. To mingle at a party or an event is to chat to people, right? So this is to, to chat informally to people. Come on, autocorrect. To chat informally. So to network is much more formal. To mingle is much more informal. In fact, at a business network, you need both. You need to network. Here's my card. And you need to mingle. Hey, nice jumper. Where did you buy that? Oh, you need to mingle as well, right? To network and to mingle. Lovely word, mingle, mingle. Can you say that? Mingle, gull. It's got the dark L, the O. Mingle, mingle. <laughs> to mingle. Lovely, to network, to mingle. So, moving on. Talking about work, how to make friends and influence people. So there's a famous book, right? How to make friends and influence people. I'm not sure how to win friends is the name of the book. I've got it down here. It's a famous book, Dale Carnegie. Some of you may know it. Let me um, let me just share it with you. When I first saw the title, I thought, I don't like that. Influence people, it sounds like manipulating people. It sounds very negative. But actually, it's really interesting. Even just for social life, um, how to win friends and influence people. Look, this is the one. How to win friends and influence people. Dale Carnegie, a very old book, but it has some golden nuggets, some really nice bits of information. It's worth reading, right? Not just for work but just for meeting people, making friends. If you can have an open mind, um, I think it's good. I think it's very, very interesting. So some of the things in that book, right, I think are just very common sense. How to make friends. Be helpful, right? Great. I remember, right, going back, when I started... Um, this was back, oh gosh, 10 or 15 years ago when I started my first business, so to speak, educational business. It was a small training school um, about 15 years ago. And I used to go to networking events and I used to take my name card and I used to meet people. And, and I would say stupidly, but, oh, hello, my name's Keith. Um, yes, I'm an English teacher. Yeah, I sell I sell training. I sell training to companies. We do all kinds of English training, whatever your needs. Here's my name card. Right. Now, and I would say that to everybody. Now, not very helpful, actually, because most people are not looking for English training. And the idea of changing that and being helpful was, was a big game changer. And so what I learned to do was to say, instead of saying, I'm Keith, I'm an English teacher, is to say, hello, I'm Keith, what do you do? Oh, right, right, so you, you sell magazines, right. Who do you sell them to? Oh, right, well, well I, I actually teach English. Is there any way I can help you? And suddenly, people would be like, oh, actually, do you know anybody, ba 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 ba? Oh, actually, could you help with this? Oh, actually, can you help... And suddenly click that connection, building a connection, because you want to try and help somebody instead of selling something. It was a big game changer for me. So being helpful, one of the 
things it says in the book I thought was great. Be helpful. Listen is another. Now, we talked earlier about socialising and being talkative, but a key part of socialising is listening, right? Dale Carnegie says, make sure the other person talks more than you, right? So listen more than you speak. <laughs> As my, a fa very, very famous uncle once said, he says, look, you have two ears and one mouth. Use them in proportion. Very clever. Uncle Tom. Two ears, one mouth. So listen twice as much as you speak. Clever, right? Uncle Tom was a clever man. So listen. Don't complain. Another great one. Because sometimes people just, oh, complain, complain, complain. And people tend to push away, right? The people who complain. However, building rapport is important, right? Building rapport is the idea um, of being on the same page, right? Having the same emotion. Let me try and explain. Having the same emotion or being on the same page. So being, oh, how can I explain this? I'm thinking of an example, right? Um, don't complain, but build rapport. So what I mean is, for example, I'll take a simple example. Um, I had a friend who came up to me, right, and said she just started complaining about work. I hate my job. I'm in the same job. I'm so bored. My boss is such an idiot. Really? He's a complete idiot. The other day, he asked me to do this, this and this. I mean, can you believe it? What an absolute idiot. I hate my job. And this went on and on. And what I tried to do, apart from, was to say, no, 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 but I'm sure your boss is, is good, really. He just doesn't understand. Um, but listen, your, your job's great because you've got this. And I'm trying to be optimistic. And she's just complaining. And so we're... And in the end, she got frustrated and says, oh, you don't understand. Boom. Okay. So building rapport, right, a much better way is when she complains about, oh, I hate my job. I hate it. It's rubbish. And my boss is an idiot. If I say, yeah, you're right. Yeah your boss, total idiot. I can't believe he does that. What an idiot. And we build rapport, right? We're on the same page. So I'm agreeing and I also complain, yeah, about her job. Your job? Oh, I don't know why you do it. Yeah, Your job is rubbish. You shouldn't do it. Yeah. And so we're agreeing. And then later you can change and be optimistic. But the idea of building rapport is really important because when you click, then you've got the friendship and then you can influence people. You can get them to change. So don't complain, but build rapport. So maybe I complain a little bit in order to build rapport. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope so. If it doesn't, rewind later. This video is recorded. Uh, come back and watch it again, right? Um. Let me just come back because there's a few interesting questions. Yes, yes, yes. Mehdi, you've got it. Okay, so build rapport while complaining. Exactly. That's it. Perfect. Um, rapport is a French word. Yes, good. It is. Um, somebody else had a comment which was very similar. To build rapport, to connect. Yes, exactly. Exactly that is connect. Why is the final T silent? Because it's a French word. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Keith totally knows how to build rapport with his students. Ah, I hope so. To get on the same page. I hope so. Thank you. This is nice from Saba. I can go out on a limb for my friends, which means to make a big effort to help them. So I can build a wonderful rapport with them. 
Yeah, I think it's a good way to strengthen relationships. Absolutely, Saba. Totally agree. Yes. Yeah, great. Good. <laughs> Look at that, Manjira. This is nothing to do with rapport, but maybe you're building rapport with me. You're the best, I say. I scored 6.5 in speaking by watching your videos. Just for three days? Seriously? And that helped you get a seven. Well, great. Job done. Excellent. Excellent. Um, agree with each other. Yeah, that's rapport, basically. <clears throat> Fantastic. So we've got be helpful. Listen. Remember your ears. Don't complain, but build rapport. Smile is another one. Somebody earlier said people who have a smile on their face are more approachable. And I totally agree. I couldn't agree more. Um, I think smiling just makes it much easier to build friendships. It's so simple, right? It is, I mean, common sense, but it's so simple. But we forget, especially at parties, right? Gosh, when I was 17 or 18, a few years ago, <laughs> and I was at a party, I was Mr. Nervous. Hello, my name's Mr. Nervous. And I was like, hello, yeah, my name's Keith. Hmm, okay, yeah. Look at the face, right? Would you approach me? Would you think I was friendly? No. And yet the smile, hello, everything changes. So simple, right? So simple. But Dale Carnegie hit the nail on the head when he said, smile and remember names. Very simple, right? It does help when people use the other person's name. Oh, hello, Jack again. Hey, Jack's thinking, oh, he remembered my name. I must be important for him. So remembering names. I think these are fantastic, very simple tips to follow to make friends and, and influence people in a positive way, right? Remember, we're talking in the context of work, university, not only making friends, but making contacts, maybe acquaintances to, to help you as well, but to help others. Lovely. How to make friends. Thank you, Dale Carnegie, <laughs> for his contribution. Excellent. I do recommend the book. So we're going to move. We're going to move. Um, I'm just going to go back to my little, little presentation thing. This is great. Socializing at work. We've talked about Excellent. Let's move on. Let's talk about small talk, right? Small talk is very interesting. Small talk is the trivial things we talk about when we meet people. Trivial means not important, right? That's why it's small talk. It's not big talk. It's small talk. So the unimportant things we talk about when we meet new people when we meet new people, we talk about the weather, we talk about food, we talk about our clothes. I don't know, all sorts of things. I'm interested, right? Um, what in your country, what do you talk about with small talk? I mean, I can share the ideas in England, um, but I'm interested to know in, in your country, what do you talk about when you meet new people? Um, in England, very much, we talk about the weather, we talk about sport, right? Football. Did you see Manchester United last night? Oh, unbelievable. They were so lucky, right, to get a 2-2 draw just because Ronaldo saved them at the last minute. Sport, food, work, hobbies and travel. These are quite common, I think, in England. Um, what do you talk about when you meet new people in your country? I'm going to have some cold tea. <laughs> Let me give you a, a couple of seconds. And whilst you're doing that, let's have a bit of jazz whilst you're um, getting your ideas together.
family, health, movies, mm. study, school and the like subjects, the subjects you like, yeah, especially for students, right? Good. Culture. <laughs> Politics. It's a big one in Spain as well. Everyone here loves to complain about politics. Well, England too. Children, interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Health, again, good. Weather, says Fadia. Politics. Not me. <laughs> right, interesting use of we, but not... <laughs> right, interesting. Shreji, family. How's life going these days? Yep, yeah, very general. Right, hobbies, foods, okay. We like to chit chat about celebrity gossips and politics. Okay. And uh, Abel says, Adele, sorry. First about the weather. So it's interesting, right? Because I think there's a difference between small talk with people you know and small talk with new people. Okay. At least in Britain, definitely. So with new people, then yes, the weather, the sport, food, work, hobbies, travel, yes. However, with new people, find common ground. So yes, sorry. So with these topics, the idea is you're finding common ground. To find common ground means to find something you have in common, right? Something you have in common. It's building rapport. So if you say, you know, I don't know, oh, you're from, um, you're from Albania. What, what kind of food do you have there? Oh, yes, we love eating this. We love fried chicken. Oh, I love chicken. I've got this special recipe and we're building rapport. We're finding common ground through this small talk. Um, talk about hobbies, then again, that's finding common ground. Be you. <laughs> that's my, my message. Now, in England, though, be careful with. So with new people, we probably would not talk about family, religion, politics, age or salary, right? Um, especially meeting new people. Because why? Well, family, because you don't know if they're divorced. You don't know if they've got problems having children. Uh, you don't know if somebody recently died in the family. So meeting a new person and saying, oh, are you married? Well, what if they've just divorced? I mean, how embarrassing is that, right? And they probably don't want to talk about it. Oh, do you have any children? What if they've been trying to have children for 10 years and they can't? You can see the potential for conflict and upsetting people. It, it's quite, for British people, it can be a bit of a dangerous area to talk about. With new people, new people, of course, with friends at work that you know, yes. How's, how's your wife? She's great. How's your husband? Lovely. Of course. But I'm talking about these with new people, right? Religion, again, because you don't know if there's going to be a conflict, if that will cause problems and politics, right? I mean, imagine you, you, you meet somebody new in your country and say, oh, our president, what an idiot, hey? And imagine the other person really likes the president. Conflict. So it's, it's seen for us to be a very um, 
a taboo area, right? With new people, I emphasize, right? With people we know down the pub, of course we talk about politics, yes. Age, oh, nice to meet you. How old are you? Salary, <laughs> I mean salary. This was a classic because this happened a lot to me when I moved to China and there's a very different culture and what people will talk about in, in Chinese or even in English um, is very different from Britain. So people would quite happily say, a new person I meet in a in a new situation, right? In a party. Hello, my name's Keith. Oh, hello. Yes, you look quite old. How old are you? And oh, you're a teacher. How much do you earn? What do you mean? Yeah, what's your salary every month? For me, very embarrassing questions I wouldn't talk about. But in that culture, quite appropriate. So I'm just talking here about British culture, right? We we are careful with these topics, right? With meeting new people. Okay, that's why, you know, small talk is often easy, but just a bit careful. And that's why, like Ambrosia says, talk about the weather. The weather, you can't go wrong, right? You can't offend people with the weather. Talk about names, absolutely. Well, age is personal with ladies only. Yes, much more with ladies. Yes, I think most men don't care. Um, but you never know, right? It can be rude, exactly. Yes. And Hassan says, yeah, I guess salary is personal. Exactly, it's a personal thing. We talk about pets. That's great. Yeah, you could talk about pets. Yes. Oh, Ravinda. <laughs> Happy Diwali to all. Very good point. Happy Diwali to everybody. <laughs> Great festivals you can talk about. Talk about education maybe. Yes, okay. Yeah, yes, exactly. Good. PDT says, I think talking about salary is common in my country as well. Right, right. Interesting. Jokes is a good one. Yep. And that's something I noticed in Spain is very, very popular, right? People meeting and using jokes to break the ice. Absolutely. Emma, lovely to see you. Weather is the best topic for small talks. Yeah. Small talk. Absolutely. Good. Even though it's different conversations, small talk always in the singular. Good point, Emma. Lovely. Okay. So, Small talk. I'm going to move on. Um, small talk, listening and encouraging others. I mean, this is, again, it's about a lot of people, when they're communicating in English, they say, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know how to keep the conversation going. Well, I think a key thing about keeping the conversation going is listening and encouraging the other person to talk, right? So, if somebody is talking and telling you something about themselves, it's very common in English to go, uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh, really, no way, right, tell me more, right, and then, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. And we use this, I think many languages do this, but in, in English for sure, um, what you don't do, is you don't listen because then a British person will stop talking and the conversation will stop. British people need to hear this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, really. We need to hear that in order to carry on feeling comfortable. Generally speaking, of course. So this idea to keep a conversation going, it's really important to use this. Tell me more. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> the uh-huh used to confuse my wife, right? My wife is Chinese and she would say something and I would go, uh-huh. And she would repeat it again because she thought uh-huh meant I don't understand. Uh-huh. And she would repeat it. I go, no, uh-huh, means, yeah, I agree, carry on. <laughs> uh-huh. <clears throat> really? No way. That's interesting. I mean, really interesting, not the uh, boring interesting. 
So there's all of these different ways to encourage people, right? <clears throat> and I'm sure this is the same in many languages, but culture may be different. <clears throat> now, another thing, when you don't really understand, I think there are two things you can do. So in your, if you're in a conversation, there's a bit of small talk, and then you start developing the conversation with well with anybody whether it's a native english speaker or a or a french person or a spanish person or japanese or wherever if you don't understand sometimes this can be embarrassing right so there you are at the party mingling people are speaking english you're listening with two ears but you don't understand and then you stop and then somebody looks at you and goes, what do you think? Because you didn't understand everything. You've got two choices, right? You can be very open and say, I'm sorry, um, I'm English is not my mother tongue. I didn't quite understand. Can you repeat that? Right? That's fine. That's great. You can be open uh, and say, I, I didn't understand. C can you repeat that? That's great. The other way is to do what native speakers do because a native speaker doesn't say, I didn't understand because they understand English. Some things a native speaker will say are, I don't really follow. Now, that means I don't follow, means I didn't follow the conversation. It doesn't mean... I didn't understand the English. It just means I didn't follow what you were saying. It's basically saying it's not me that has the problem. It's your explanation is not clear. I don't follow, right? So you're kind of saying to the other person, you're not clear. Make it clear. Or what do you mean exactly? Again, you're saying I don't follow because you're not very clear. What you said is not clear. Say it another way. What do you mean exactly? Um, or I, I don't fully get it. Can you explain again? Again, it's not about I don't understand the English. It's that you, the speaker over there, you're not very clear. I don't fully get it. Your ideas, I don't fully get it. I don't fully understand the idea. Can you explain again? So, I think there are two approaches. When you don't really understand people and conversations in English, you can be open and say, listen, I don't speak English perfectly. I don't understand. Can you repeat? Or what natives do is we just say, well, I don't really follow. S suggesting you need to be clearer. Or I don't fully get it. Can you explain that again? Or what do you mean exactly? Right. All of these are great sentences to help the conversation. And if you don't understand particularly, the last one is a great one in IELTS speaking part three. Because remember, we're talking about keeping the conversation going. IELTS speaking part three is about keeping the conversation going, developing ideas. But what if the examiner asks a question and you don't understand. Of course, you can say, I didn't quite understand. Can you repeat that? But if you don't want the examiner to know that you don't understand, you can say, like a native speaker, what do you mean exactly? It's perfect. It's fine. It's perfect, right? So the examiner may say to you, I'm trying to think, uh, if an examiner is in a part three, and the examiner, let's imagine, says, so we're talking about climate change. Um, what do you think of the recent, yes, what do you think of the recent um, goals of governments around the world to reach 1.5 target? What do you mean exactly? And the examiner has to rephrase. Well, I mean, recently governments have tried to reach this target um, to reduce climate change. Do you think it's a good idea? Oh, yes. Blah, 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 blah. 
So this question, what do you mean exactly, is a great question because it's a question native speakers use to get clarification. So, whoops, wrong screen, but it's great, right? What do you mean exactly? So these are ways, if you don't understand, to keep going and help you in any conversation, but also in IELTS speaking. Nice, I think. <laughs> even if I say so myself. Great, good. Oh, we've got some other good ideas here. Yes, Nandan says, can you elaborate a bit? Yeah, lovely. That's nice as well. Very, very nice. Yeah, good. What do you mean exactly? I love that. Good. What do you mean? What do you mean is good, but it's a little bit direct. What do you mean? If you want to make it a bit softer, what do you mean exactly? It just makes it a little bit softer, right? Okay, great. <laughs> what are you trying to say to me? Um, oh, grammatically, it's good, but it's a bit strong. What are you trying to say to me? Um, it's a bit strong. I think that's too strong. It's like, how can I explain that? It's like you're suggesting that the speaker has an, an, a, a, an ulterior motive, that they're trying to communicate something different. And you're saying, no, 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 what are you trying to say to me? It just sounds a bit strong. It sounds too strong for me. Grammatically great, but I wouldn't use that in the IELTS test. And I'd be careful in a conversation. Mm, yes, it's very strong. <laughs> Great ideas, though. This is the way, guys. Exchange ideas and then we can help see what's appropriate or what may not be appropriate. So, yeah, excuse me. I didn't catch it. Can you please repeat it? Perfect, Sedenek. Perfect. Great. Great. Claire, the same. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. Can you repeat it once for me? Lovely. Yes. Yeah, all of those are great. Great, great. <laughs> Can you make it easier for me? Farhad, again, in a conversation, yes. In the IELTS test, no. You don't want to say to the examiner, make it easy for me, because that's saying my English is low. You don't want to say like an advertisement, oh, my English is low. So in the IELTS, don't say that. No. Can you explain that, right? In a conversation with friends, it's okay, right? But not in IELTS, yeah. Uh, UH SARS, well, this one. Oh, not this one, sorry, this one. Could you please enunciate? Don't say that. Not, not in the IELTS. Because enunciate means to pronounce clearly. And if you're suggesting the examiner is not pronouncing clearly, the examiner will not be happy. It's a bit offensive. Um, so don't say enunciate. And it's very formal. I wouldn't say that. Could you please say it again? It's just better. Right, some really interesting uh, phrases there. So I hope that I hope this helps get, give you an idea, right, about what's appropriate and different techniques to help you keep communicating, keep the conversation going. Right. Um, good. I'm going to move on very briefly. This one, winding up. So if I'm talking about conversations here and communicating with people, we were talking about small talk and then developing the conversation. Winding up then is, is finishing your conversation, right? And this may be, for example, at a party, at a networking event, at a, a work event. And so the, when you want to finish the conversation, maybe because you're tired or you're bored or it's time to go home, very typically in English, we say anyway. And anyway, if you watch my video the other day, right, means 
change the topic, change, talk about something different or do something different anyway. And that just tells the listener it's time to stop. And then we would use the the um, present perfect continuous. It has been nice meeting you. Or it's been nice chatting. So it it's, it's, it has, that's what it stands for. It has been nice meeting you. We use the present perfect continuous because it's the idea that an activity began in the past, has been continuing to now, but now it's time to stop. It's been nice meeting you, but shut up. <laughs> it's been nice meeting you, but bye-bye, right? It's, it's a way of communicating stop, but very politely. So anyway, it's been nice meeting you with the pronunciation. It's been nice. It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been nice. Try with me. It's been, it's been nice. It's been nice meeting you. Try again, repeat with me. It's been, it's been nice. It's been nice chatting. And that, if you're speaking to a, an English speaker, that's enough. They will understand and they will go, right? I mean, you, that's the scenario. If you're in a meeting or a, at a party, anyway, it's been nice chatting. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Okay, yeah, time to go. Bye-bye. They understand. People understand what you're really saying, right? And of course it's true. It, it probably is true, even if it's not. I mean, you don't say, well, anyway, it's been a terrible conversation. I need to go home. <laughs> don't say that. Anyway, it's been nice chatting, whether it's true or not, but I need to go. Or we're very euphemistic. We can also say, I'll let you get on. So instead of saying I'm going is I will let you carry on. Um, I'll let you get on. I don't want to keep you. So you're, you're kind of saying, I'm letting you go. I don't want to keep you. Or directly, I need to make a move. To make a move means to leave, right? I need to make a move. So these are ways of finishing that conversation in a nice way. Anyway, it's been nice chatting. It's been nice having this live lesson with you. I need to make a move. Bye-bye. That's it, right? That's how you can wind up the conversation. Lovely. <laughs> yes, but Joe, don't leave yet. We've not finished yet. We're still going to do Kahoot. <laughs> this is a nice one. I think I've taken too much of your time. That's lovely. That's very polite. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> It's a pleasure meeting you. It's been a pleasure, right? This would be better. This would be better. Use the the um, present perfect. Much better, much more natural. It's been a pleasure meeting you because the present perfect means stop. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Oh, right, good. You're leaving. Yeah, I've got to make a move. Okay. I have to run. Yeah, good. I have to make a move. I have to run. Um, I'm off. Catch you later. These are great. Let me make a note. I'll just add these. I'm off. Catch you later. I need to run. And they're great because they're, they're idiomatic, right? You're not going to run away. <laughs> it just means I need to leave. Okay. Lovely. I'm going to move on very, very briefly come over here just for a couple of seconds to have a look at from small talk have a quick look at idioms and then we're going to move on to kahoot i've just got a couple of idioms that's not true i think i've got four idioms five idioms to share with you some of these you may know we've got to break the ice to break the ice okay to break the ice is to really to start a conversation easily whoops 
So when you're at a party, everybody's nervous, nobody speaks. You need to break the ice, to break the tension, help people relax. That's probably a better explanation. Help people relax. So you can break the ice with a game. You can break the ice with a joke. You can break the ice with a compliment, right? Different ways to break the ice. And again, this is a common expression, I think, in many languages. A fair weather friend. Well, is a friend only when times are good which is not really a friend right because a friend should be with you through thick and thin when times are good and when times are bad but some people like to be with you when times are good but when times are bad bye they go they disappear this we call a fair weather friend so when the wet weather when the weather's good when things are sunny they're with you as soon as it starts raining, they make a move. <laughs> That's a fair weather friend. Nice expression. This is, I think, much more common in American English, but it's becoming used in Britain as well. To chew the fat, right, means to chit chat. I mean, if you can imagine somebody chewing the fat, <laughs> if you're, let me change, if you're eating, It looks like, hello, my name's Keith. It looks like you're talking, right? To chew the fat looks like you're talking. So the expression to chew the fat means to, to chit chat, to have a conversation informally. That's why I say chit chat. Chit chat is more informal, right? Informally. Yeah, why don't you pop over and we can chew the fat over coffee? Can you pop over tomorrow and we'll chew the fat over a pizza? Or fish and chips. <laughs> to be a moaning mini <laughs> is somebody who always complains. Someone who always complains. Do you remember we talked about complaining and building rapport? Um, some people always complain. And so you can say, listen, I know work is difficult but don't be a moaning mini right don't complain all the time so a moaning to so yes let me change this slightly so to be a moaning mini is someone who complains all the time and the example is don't be a moaning mini okay lastly to give someone the time of day it doesn't mean to give the time. Hello, it's six o'clock. No. To give someone the time of day means to give someone your time, to listen to them. So that means to, to listen, mm, to give someone the time of day. To give someone your time and to listen to them. So sometimes you meet people, right, and they just don't listen. And you're asking for help and they don't listen. They ignore you. They don't give you the time of day. But, but you may find some approachable people, especially in the workplace or at university, you may find a teacher who's very approachable and will spend time listening to you. They will give you the time of day. Right. I think a good teacher will give you the time of day, listen to you and try and help you. So to give someone the time of day is to give someone your time and to listen to them. That's basically what it means. Right. So some bosses don't give you the time of day. Some teachers don't give you the time of day. Right. My boss just doesn't give me the time of day. Just doesn't give me the time of your life. Time of day. 
OK. Great. Those are some idioms to break the ice. A fair weather friend, to chew the fat, to be a moaning mini, to give someone the time of day. Nice. Lovely. My, oh my, what has happened to the time today? <laughs> Idioms, last but not least, Kahoot. So here we're going to do a final review and we're going to see which of you have been staying awake. So it's a very, very simple activity. Um, Kahoot, we'll just do it together. I'm going to go onto the website. You need to keep watching here if you're new, by the way. But you need to look at www.kahoot.it and then put in your name, put in the code pin I'll give you, and then we can play the game together. So let me just uh, set this up. Just give me a moment to get the Kahoot ready and then we can play it together. Where are you? Come on, socialising. Here you are. <laughs> right, stay with me. We're going to play together. And I'll share this with you. Let me show you the website so you can see what's going on. So as soon as you get there at kahoot.it, put in the game pin, which I'll show you now. Put in your name. The game pin is 229-2578. 229-2578. Um, and then... Once you're inside, we can start the game. We've got four questions to find out what you've learnt today. We'll do a, a review of some key language from today. Don't worry if you can't get in. You can put your answer in the comments as well. That's absolutely fine. Power Life, see you soon. So the game is Kahoot. It's a fun game, but it's a nice way to us for us to review some of the language today. Nima, don't worry if you can't get in. You can just watch the screen uh, for the questions and put your answer in the chat. That's fine. Lena, nice to be with you. Faria says, I like to give my mother the time of day. Good for you. Monica says, what a lesson. <laughs> Good. Hope you like it. Mariam says, my professor doesn't give me the time of day. That's what you need to say. Yes. OK, we've got lots of people in. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller so we can see. OK, let's begin. Let's get straight in there. <clears throat> Kahoot. Let's start. Socialising. First question. Which of the following is the odd one out? Approachable, aloof, affable, gregarious. So which one is different? That's what it means. Approachable, aloof, affable, gregarious. Choose your answer. You've got 30 seconds. Well, not anymore. You've now got six seconds. <laughs> right, some good answers. Aloof. Fantastic. 75 of you got the right answer. Aloof means cold and unfriendly. All of the others mean friendly or sociable, right? Excellent. Good. Let's check out the board. <laughs> Vietnam is at the top. Duong is me, second. Addy is third. Somebody's got diarrhea. Oh, dear. <laughs> Let me just uh, make this a bit bigger. There we go. That's better. OK, question number two. 
You should blank over for dinner sometime. Pip, poop, pop or pipe. <laughs> you should blank over for dinner sometime. Meaning to visit, of course. What's the answer? Pip, poop, pop or pipe. Well done, Shriji. Sulfika, well done. Yosra, well done. Athira, well done. Yeah, look at that. Fantastic. 124 of you got pop to pop over to visit. Great. <laughs> Good. Let's see where we're doing. Oh, Duang is me, is up in first place. Lom Anglais. Bonjour, is in second place. Como, <laughs> come to bosquitas. Right, good. Somebody's in third. Let's move on. Question number three. If you mingle at a party, then you drink too much, eat too much, talk too much, network. What's the meaning of mingle? If you mingle at a party, what does it mean? Oh, interesting. Well done, Azawab. Navdeep, well done. It means, oh, network. But look at that. 71 people said talk too much. If you mingle, then you talk. No, so to mingle is to network. It means to, to go around and meet people. All of the others were red herrings, you see. Right, that's question three. Let's see how we're doing. Duong is still second at uh, first. Yumiko has come up to second. Fantastic. Duk An, we've got a, a very strong Vietnamese contingent here. Mary Mary's in fifth place. Um, and Bao Tang has a streak with three correct answers in a row. Interesting. It's the last question. I'd like to go for coffee and chew the blank with my friends. Fat, candy, meat, gum. I like to go for coffee and chew the blank with my friends. And of course, we're talking about chit-chatting. <laughs> Yosra, your questions about idioms, not quite the same. No, they don't mean the same. A bit, I'll explain another time. Fat. Yes, to chew the fat. Well done. Hi, uh, we've got 103 people got to chew the fat, which means to chit chat, have an informal conversation. I like to go for coffee and chew the fat with my friends, uh, not chew the gum. I mean, there is chewing gum, but that doesn't mean anything. It's not an idiom. Chew the fat is the idiomatic expression. Great. So let's look at the podium. Third place. Come to besiktas. Yumiko, second, which means, I think. Dong is me, is up in first place. Well done, you. Absolutely brilliant. Nice. <laughs> Hooray. Good. So, listen, guys. Um, come back. How do I get you back? Here we are. Great. We're back. Um, it's been nice chatting. <laughs> anyway, just to let you know, right, The if you want more information, you can um, you can find out if you want more information about IELTS. I'm just trying to find my stuff um, and more resources. Go and visit the keithspeakingacademy.com. Um, this is the website. You can find out stuff about IELTS up here. Lots of information, lots of resources over here. Um, you can follow, hello, free resources. Yes, lots of stuff there. You can follow my blog um, up here. Lots of information and tips on the blog. The IELTS Speaking Interactive course is, enrollment is closed. That's happening now. The next course is probably February. But if you want to study with me um, I do have still the IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7 course. 
you can find it on my find it on my website um it's self study you can follow that great course really good preparation very flexible study when you want um so you can find out information about that again if you go to the website and click on that big orange button my online courses it'll tell you about those two courses. well there's IELTS speaking success and the fluency course you can go and sign up there and you can um find out about what other students said and you can sign up you can go and buy them now they're 22 dollars going for a song <laughs> brilliant so listen thank you so much for joining me today if you are on youtube do remember subscribe turn on notifications um, if you want to join me on facebook then there's the facebook page there's also a facebook group you can come and join us it's keith's mastermind community for IELTS speaking. I cannot wait to see you next time. Do remember, right, for those of you who've just arrived, to go and check the YouTube channel. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> go and check the YouTube channel to find out the dates of the live lessons. So I'm doing two live lessons a month, two recorded lessons a month, okay? So do go and check out on the website, uh, on the YouTube channel, English Speaking Success. You'll see there at the very, very top, right? If I bring this down, um, the video's in November. We've got a live lesson today. The 13th will be recorded. The 20th is recorded. And the next live lesson, Thursday the 25th at the same time right so please do check the activities for november everything's changing a little bit but that's what's going on that's on my youtube channel you can find out all about that there so please do check as always it's been a pleasure i've really enjoyed being with you today i hope this has helped i hope it's useful um, with your study um that's it thank you very much let's leave with some nice pop music and I will see you next time around. Take care my friends. Bye bye. Cheerio.